So for many of you, when you see the words chapel and Python and the same title, you know in your hearts, I'm gonna talk about Arcuda. And that is true. But the other thing is the trick to the coupling and the workflows is fabric attached memory. So let me start off, oops, hang on a second. There we go. So let me start off by explaining what do I mean by fabric attached memory? The OpenFAM library lets us take a bunch of conventional nodes and expose some of their memory as a pool that can be shared and used by programmers using compute nodes. So for example, this slide shows a pool of memory and the programmers on these compute nodes have created some FAM regions, some shared FAM regions and some shared FAM data items, some shared FAM item data items within those regions. The OpenFAM API lets the programmers use RDMA to perform operations on these um, items. For example, scatter, gather, copy, and atomics. Okay. And I should also say a little bit about Arcuda, as, 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 even though I know that many of you know what it is. So Arcuda is a Python package that makes it easy for data scientists to interactively explore large data sets using supercomputers. And the secret sauce to Arcuda is that, it, uh, is that it has a server that's written in Chapel. So for example, this example shows a, a really simple example where a, the programmer working on say a Jupyter notebook or maybe their laptop in Python imports Arcuda as AK and then creates two arrays, one of 10,000 random integers and the other of a sequence of integers. And both of these arrays to the programmer look and feel like they're um, just a normal Python object. However, really they are parallel distributed arrays, PD arrays, which means that the values of the data values that um, make up these arrays actually are stored and live in the memory, in the virtual address spaces of the uh, Arcuda server, the chapel program running on the compute nodes. This slide shows our software stack. So basically we um, implemented two components to, for this work. And um, the first component is a FAM array storage manager. And for this, we extended chapel with a, um, a a C linkage library that and an, an open FAM API that lets um, the chapel programmer call single locale operations on data um, living in FAM. In other words, exposes the open FAM API for in the single locale. And then on top of that, uh, we also added a um, FAM array store module. And this allows multi locale uh, operations of data uh, that stores in FAN. So put, get, gather, scatter, et cetera. And um, using that, we extended the Arcuda server um, to support um, moving data between Arcuda parallel distributed arrays, PD arrays, and the arrays of data stored in FAM, and also to store um, FAM objects in the Arcuda symbol table. And this means that we could then extend the Arcuda uh, client, the Arcuda client Python module to um, support, to let the Python programmer then uh, create work with FAM arrays and FAM store classes, uh, objects. So that's the first part. And what this means is now, um, this shows our simple example from before, except that we've added in two new things. First of all, uh, the programmer now can create a FAM array uh, which is a FAM data item that lives in FAM. And they, they create this item so that it can hold 100 million, um, 100 million uh, integers. And the data for this, uh, the values of this array reside in FAM, just as the values of those PD arrays lived in the memory of the compute nodes, the values of this array, and it's initialized initially to zero because we didn't tell it not to. Um, will live in the pool of memory that's being exposed. And now the programmer can use the FAM API to uh, actually the uh, FAM array storage managers API to uh, scatter 
uh, to use those two PAD arrays we created earlier and scatter those um, that sequence of numbers into random locations on FAM. So that's what the FAM Array Storage Manager does. And the second thing we implemented was a FAM data set storage manager up here using the FAM Array Storage Manager. And before I get into what that is, let's talk a little bit about uh, a little bit more about um, some of the attributes of fabric attached memory. In particular, um, the remote memory, although it has it's has better bandwidth and better latency than uh, an SSD or flash, it's still lower bandwidth and higher latency than local DRAM. And this is understandable because you're having to go across the network. So in order to let our Python programmers solve problems that exceed their local memory and get the best performance possible, we want to make it so that when we move data between FAM and the DRAM and the compute nodes, we want to place the data in memory so that it's close to the processors that will actually do the work. And we also want to make it so that um, when we do com computation, we're operating on distinct subsets of the program data because that will make it easier for us to do this data placement and to uh, make sure that data is where it where we want it to be. So, um, so our trick for doing that, our approach for doing that, is that we we take it as a batch oriented approach, and um, what this means is that when we store data in in FAM. We store it in batches as discrete arrays. So we imagine that the data is coming in and it's being ingested. Like so, for example, this slide shows um, a simple taxi data store, kind of like the New York City taxi cab data that's published publicly and that people use. So um, this data is just kind of streaming into FAM. It's getting ingested into discrete arrays. So this might be like the pickup zones from batch zero, and this could be the pickup zones from batch one, and this could be the drop-off zones from batch zero, and this could be the drop-off zones from batch one, and we have the times that the pickups happened and the drop-offs happened and the fares. And uh, so we, we ingest the data in batches and we store them in batches and we work with them in batches, but the FAM data set store presents this data to the a Python user as an integrated data, as a set of integrated data sets. And uh, when I say data set, I mean something like a um, an Arcuda data frame or a Pandas data frame, meaning that you have um, an ordering. So you have an index, you have a index data, and you have column data, and you have columns. So here it's organized as pickup zone, drop off zone, pickup time, drop off time, and fare. And um, and the trick, the way workflows fit into this is we also support derived data sets and derived columns. So for example, um, we have a derived, a, de a derived data set uh, results in a new data set. So, and as I said, it's basically an index. So here we've created a new data set that's, um, that's done by selecting the rides from the trip data set where the fare is over $100 or um, 10,000 cents because these, the fare is in cents. And um, what, what this shows is that's basically at this point, it's just an index. It shows that the, uh, the that um, this derived data set will contain just the records that correspond to um, index value three and index value six from the base data set. And uh, we can use that index now to gather uh, columns, the data, uh, the column data from of interest from the base data. So here we've gathered the um, the pickup time from the uh, base data just for those uh, records that meet that filter, and uh, we also support creating derived columns. So here there's a new derived column where the, uh, the values in that are the drop-off time minus the pickup time, and we're saving that using a new column name, duration. 
So this slide gives the big picture of what I just said in the last four slides. We have, um, we work on batches of data in FAM arrays, so discrete FAM arrays stored in the FAM array store. And then the data set manager, this is in two here, the data set manager prevents, presents integrated views of both the base data and the derived data um, as a collection of FAM data sets. And we can have multiple Arcuda instances, so multiple Arcuda servers um, can then attach to the same data set store. And this lets uh, the Arcuda users share the FAM data uh, while maintaining their own symbol tables and their own internal working data sets. And in this slide, uh, we're showing a, the taxi data store, and we're also showing that the same FAM store could also expose other um, FAM data set stores. Now, remember I said that we're um, ingesting and working with the data as distinct batches. These are ordered and they're uniquely, we keep track of them. And this means that we can support incremental processing so that somebody can start work and then um, after they've done some work, they might then um, decide to save their derived data set um, work to FAM, and then they can go away. And when they come back, by the time they've arrived back, maybe more data has been ingested into the um, base data set. Now they can update their derived data set so that, um, so that it takes advantage of what they previously computed. And even more than that, if some new user comes and wants to do something that would build off of the previous work, they too can take advantage of those saved results, those pre saved previous results. And on top of that, you can imagine that we might have like Arcuda instance three might actually be supporting uh, not a human user, but an automatic update mechanism because we can let these um, human programmers register their derived data sets and their derived columns um, for automatic update. So that um, this, well, for example, the, our, the update, um, the automatic update service might be uh, called by, fan, by cron like every five minutes or something. And it can just check and see, has new data arrived that would impact um, these, these uh, derived data sets that are uh, registered for automatic updates? And if so, it can update them. So it could be that the programmer comes back the next day, new data has arrived and um, it's already been incorporated into the, um, the derived work that they did yesterday. So Harali, now let's may, talk may I ask a oh, question, yeah. please? Sure, sure. This is John Yost. Um, when you say data arriving, um, yes. is there a separate process feeding fabric attached memory and then Arcuda is, the Arcuda instances are accessing it uh, read only or, or how's the data getting in there? Ah, yes, exactly. Um, so at the moment, the data is getting ingested as read only and the Arcuda instances um, can add new derived data uh, but they don't change the base data. Uh, I think that we could in the future support changes to the base data. I would probably Im implement that initially as a, as a delta set. In other words, um, as a set of, uh, of changes. And actually, when I think about it, uh, I actually, we actually are supporting uh, changes to the data because we're storing all the metadata using this mechanism too. So, and we do that as a, as a bunch of um, delta sets, if that makes sense. Gotcha. Is, um, how do you prevent collisions? What do you mean by collisions? Can you give me an example? Um, you, know, a row, you know, random row within the taxi data fam data set store and uh, Narcuda instance changes the value. Oh, 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 okay. I forgot to say, uh, we also support locks. The FAM array storage manager supports locking. Gotcha. Okay, cool. All right, thank you. Okay. okay. So let's talk a little bit about where the data lives because this shows some of the, this just helps. I, I like to know where does my working data set 
live. So because we're processing this in batches, uh, the, the data and the metadata persist. Um, so that when they're shared, the shared data all lives in the memory of the FAM nodes as FAM arrays. Uh, but the, um, because we're moving the data, because we're using the FAM array store to, to move the data into the uh, compute nodes when we work on it, uh, using bulk transfer, uh, you can think of it as uh, the FAM data set storage manager is paging the data, pat batches of data between the FAM arrays and the PD arrays. Uh, so our, our unit of paging is a batch. So this means that the working data set lives in the memory of the compute nodes. And then finally, uh, the data set storage manager instances are actually transient. And the working metadata working, the working set for the metadata lives in memory, therefore in Python. So uh, this shows the, John's question about where, how does ingest work? So this is an example system setup of some, um, of how this would be deployed on a cluster, how this could be deployed on a cluster. There's our FAM servers that are um, exposing the memory pool. Oh, excuse me. And here we have some uh, chapel programs, a chapel program that's running uh, ingest using some nodes. And this is what is getting the data, the new data into FAM. And here we have a Python user um, using a server on some nodes, and then also the automatic update processor. Okay. Rumi, uh, may I ask a question sure. in terms of um, the ingest part with Chapel? Is um, is that is that code available on GitHub? Um, I'm just kind of curious how that works. Is is Chapel? going out and reading it off of a queue or is there um, an external system uh, um, sending it into chapel? I'm kind of curious how, how the streaming data part works. Can I jump in real quick here for uh, scheduling purposes? I think we should just let the speakers uh, do their presentation and then keep our questions towards the end of it. So let's just let uh, Harumi uh, finish their presentation and then maybe we can do q and if you have the time. Sorry about it, John. Okay. Okay. Uh, okay, and I'll, I can take you offline in the break too, John. Okay. So, in addition to everything I described, oh, okay, the answer is we use the FAM array store, by the way. Okay. Uh, in addition to everything else that I described, we also provide an HDF5 interface, which is hierarchical data format um, five, and it lets it lets scientists store complex data uh, in a file, in a single file, and we have basically added a an open fam connector. Okay, uh, takeaways and next steps. So the takeaways were Chapel does a really nice job uh, with the data distribution. Uh, and the fam array extensions to Chapel and Arcuda uh, let the Python programmers and also the Chapel programmers work with fam. And the, uh, the fam dataset storage manager uh, let's users derive data sets through workflows. And I'm, I'm not going to read this. And the potential next steps are memory side computation. In other words, um, doing operations on the, uh, on the memory servers themselves for data that's, that doesn't need to go to the compute nodes, for operations that don't need to go to the compute nodes. And then second, um, there's a native paging uh, across, um, sorry, and then the last thing is um, there is a chapel extension to natively support FAM, which that was described in last year's chug, and I mean Chu. And uh, its future work would be to support uh, native paging more naturally using that to support uh, maybe with batches. It's unclear. And okay, now there's time for maybe, oh, are we out of time now? No, unfortunately, we're out of time. I think uh, okay. maybe questions can be asked during breaks or something like that. Uh, okay. I think we can move on to the next talk. Thank you very much for your presentation. Okay, thank you.